Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It feels like it's been ages, but I did want to film my April faves and fails, so that is what I'm doing today. I usually film in the morning when I do film sit down videos, and I'm actually filming in the afternoon now, so the sun is kind of coming in the window and it's gonna get brighter and darker, and we're just all gonna have to deal with it. I have one fail to share with you, and it is this Primal Earth Shave Gel. We needed to get shave gel and this per unit was cheaper than just the regular shave gel so i thought i'd give it a try and i absolutely despise it it is so horrible first of all it does not foam up so normally shave gel you'll pump out into your hand and then as you rub it on your skin it kind of foams up this does not do that it is just like this goopy mucusy gel that you then slather onto your skin and so you end up using more of it to start with also because you can't see it you can't see where you've shaved it is also so viscous and let me show you i'm gonna have to get up and go wash my hands but you need to see this it's disgusting so okay let's get that focused it comes out like this you know like shave gel you can see what it's doing already look at this wait i want to make sure that you can see this look at this how disgusting is that? It's like snot. Ugh, it's so gross. Now I have to go wash my hands. Bear with me. Okay, I'm back. That is the other thing I hate about it is it doesn't just rinse off. So normally you put your shave gel on, it foams up, you shave, you can see where you've shaved because it's like making a track through the foam and then the shower just like rinses it off. Not this stuff. So you have to slather it all over your legs. Then you try and shave not only can you not see where you've gone but your razor just skids all over the place it's like aquaplaning because that stuff is so snotty that it's just, i don't know your, your razor just slides all over the place and then it doesn't rinse off with the shower you have to like rub it off with your hands which you kind of need to do anyway because then you can feel all the bits that you've missed because your razor's sliding around and you can't see where you shaved it is horrible literally the only thing going for it is that it smells nice it smells kind of minty and fresh and <laughs> it smells nice but even smelling it now i feel traumatized because it's so horrible to use so do not buy this stuff it is awful it was like i said cheaper than regular shave gel but that's because it was on special offer probably because nobody ever wants to buy it because it's hideous okay after that impassioned rant about shave gel i'll move on to my favorites and i'll start off with some food favorites one of which is cooking cabbage in a specific way so i started doing this in april and we had it so many times and grant and i both love it so i slice up the cabbage and then i put a bit of sesame oil with it in a hot pot and i just stir fry it and i add a seasoning which is based on the seasoning you can buy in the u.s called everything but the bagel and it basically has sesame seeds onion garlic salt and i think poppy seeds in it and I just sprinkle that in and mix it all up as I stir fry and it takes about five minutes to do and it is so delicious so we've really been enjoying that also in the line of food items I've discovered a new convenient snack that I can actually eat you guys know I'm on a super restricted diet I'm gluten free I'm dairy free I can't eat corn I can't eat potatoes I can't eat all these things I don't eat sugar and it's really difficult to find convenience foods that don't have crap in them and I usually just cook from scratch and just make my own food, but sometimes when you're traveling, you need something that is shelf stable and that is just easy to grab and go. And so I was happy to discover Uncle Ben's rice packs. So this is the Mexican style. The first one I tried is the tomato and basil. And then there's also a vegetable pilau that I can eat. So they do a chicken one and a golden vegetable one, but they've got ingredients in that I can't eat. But these I can. And this pouch saved my life when we were traveling. We were recently traveling for Grant's work. We had really early starts. We were in a motel and we needed to eat breakfast and go early in the morning. And I took some of these with and I was having this with hot smoked salmon just mixed together as breakfast. And that kind of saved my bacon because I can't eat toast and that sort of thing. So. These were really convenient to have on hand. They are delicious. They could be a snack or a light meal on its own, or you could mix it into a salad or as part of another meal. So I'll read you some of the ingredients. The Mexican style rice says it has steamed parboiled long grain rice, red pepper, tomato paste, 
sunflower oil, natural flavoring, spices, jalapeno pepper, salt, onion powder, yeast extract, and citric acid. Like that's all that's in it. There's no preservatives, there's no stabilizers, emulsifiers, crap. The tomato and basil is particularly delicious. It kind of has a pesto flavor to it. And that has parboiled long grain rice, tomato paste, tomatoes, lemon juice, sunflower oil, herbs, tomato powder, natural flavors, salt, garlic, sugar, spices, and colors, which is pe paprika extract. Now it does have sugar in, but per serve, which is half of a packet, I mean, you can have the whole packet for lunch, which I have done as well. Um, it has sugars, 2.6 grams so i guess it will be just over five grams if you eat the whole packet in one go and a teaspoon of sugar is six grams so it's not a heap of sugar and i'm not eating them all the time so i'm okay with that the vegetable pilau has the rice carrot red pepper sunflower oil lemon juice spices yeast extract onion powder coriander salt onion fennel seeds spinach cumin seeds and curry powder so there's no sugar in there and there's no crap in there either so I've really been enjoying those. And the best part is they're only two bucks for a pack. Normally when I find a convenience food I can eat, it's a specialist paleo product or whatever, and it's super expensive. And these are not, so I'm a fan. You can kind of see at the bottom what it is. Basically you just rip this open and microwave for like a minute. It's basically like rice. So a good find and I do recommend. Staying with food and drink is peppermint tea. I have been enjoying peppermint tea for a while. Like, you know, I drink it occasionally. But in April, I have rediscovered a new love of peppermint tea. It's just so good. Like, I would drink it and be like, I love this. Like, why do I not drink this all the time? It is warm and soothing, but it's also like cooling and refreshing at the same time. And it is actually really good for you. And I wanted to mention that because it was definitely a favorite in April. Zoe Sug. Um, on Zoella actually mentioned a tea that she has discovered called buttermint which is like peppermint and vanilla but I can't get it here I can get it on iHerb so I'm going to try that on my next order because it sounds delicious but peppermint tea in general has been a favorite a random little item that I've been enjoying is my new key ring Ta -da! so basically it is this bit the little pink braided handle and this like gray metal ring and it cost me less than a dollar on aliexpress and i just really like it it's big enough that i mean i like that you can kind of grip it like that if you've got a lot of things to juggle it's big enough that i can spot it and find it in my handbag and kind of grab it and it just yeah it just really works for me but it's not too bulky on there i have our back door key our front door key i don't know why i need both and my car key that i've put onto this little clip so I put the clip onto the key ring and then when I take my car in to be serviced or anything, I can literally just give them the key and snap it back on when I get my car back. So yeah, I've been enjoying that. It comes in all different colors. Like I said, it was less than a dollar US and it's worked really well and I just really like it. One of my favorites from April is reading. I have always loved to read. I taught myself to read before I started school because I just couldn't wait. I've always been a bookworm, but for some reason in April I just ramped up my love of reading and I just wanted to read all the time. I read 10 books in April. It did help that I was traveling and I was able to kind of read in my downtime while I was away. And going on from that is one of my favorites is ebooks. So I use the app called Overdrive. You can see that. And you can see I've got a book on the go. Overdrive is amazing because you can put in your library card number and then you can just get audiobooks and ebooks for free from your library. And it's just so convenient having a book on your phone. Like I said, I was traveling, we were traveling with other people, we didn't drive down in our own car. So we were in and out of cars, I was in and out of conference rooms and motel rooms and on the go. And I didn't have to tote a book along with me and I didn't have to worry about running out of reading material while I was away because I could just download another book. So that has been a huge favorite is ebooks. It is just so handy if you're in a long queue or a waiting room or whatever to whip out your phone and you've got a book to read. You don't need to access, like use your data or access Wi-Fi or anything. Once you've downloaded the book, you do need to do so when you're first downloading the book. But once you have it, you just have a book with you until you finish reading it and it's so handy. It's also handy if you need to read because you can't sleep and you don't want to disturb anyone else in the room. You don't have to turn the light on to read. You can just discreetly read your book on your phone and not disturb anybody around you. 
if you want to know about the 10 books that I read in April then you'll have to look out for my books video which will also be coming soon. Another app that I've been enjoying is one called Hours Tracker. And you can see the little doodad there, that is what it looks like, it looks like a little pig with a clock on it. And I've been using that to track my hours that I actually spend on YouTube because sometimes it feels like I spend so much time on YouTube and YouTube related stuff and sometimes I feel like I don't spend that much time at all and I you know like I had no perspective basically I wanted to know how much time am I actually spending on doing YouTube versus how much I'm earning from YouTube what is my hourly wage so that is the app that I've been using to track my YouTube hours so you can kind of clock in clock out when you start and stop work if you find yourself working and realize actually I forgot to clock in you can tell it clock in at a particular time so like 10 minutes ago or whenever you started working you can divide it into different jobs so I just kind of put it you can see like I started tracking per week like I just made a new job each time so that each one is separate you can put rates along with your jobs so it calculates your wage as you go but I literally just wanted to track my hours so Let's see, view job details. The week of 9 to 15th of April, I spent 9.22 hours on YouTube. Anyway, it's just been really handy to be able to keep track of my hours and it works the way I wanted it to work and it's a simple app. I don't like anything that's too complicated or where you have to make further in-app purchases or anything like that. So that is one I recommend if you want to track any hours. Well, I have a lot of favorites. I still have quite a few to go through, so I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is these tunics so when we were traveling we were going out to dinner every single night and I had to pack a lot of clothes and also had to figure out what to wear because it was kind of smart casual we would change for dinner so I was having to take an outfit for the day an outfit for dinner I didn't want to have a massive suitcase and I didn't want to be too overdressed or underdressed and these tunics have worked out perfectly I've got three here they're from Posty. I'll do a cutaway showing you how they look on, but first I'll tell you about them. So they are basic straight up and down short sleeved tunics. And the front, you can probably see the sheen, the front is like this very, very lightweight satiny fabric. And then the back is like a really soft, stretchy jersey material. They come to just above the knee. Like I said, they're short sleeved, they're just straight. I've got them in this pattern and this pattern just like art deco style they come in so many different colors and patterns and i've also got this floral one i didn't actually wear this one when i was away but they are so lightweight to pack they don't crease they are twenty dollars each and they're from posty or posty plus and you can wear them as a dress if you want to. I was wearing them with a long necklace and with leggings and my ankle boots. So you can see how they look and how they kind of skim over any trouble areas. They are so super comfortable. If you're going out for a big meal, what is better than wearing a loose tunic and leggings? You can't get better than that. So these just worked really, really well for me and well for travel and I highly recommend them. And I think they'd work well in summer as well. Like you can wear it as a dress. You can wear it like I did, lay it over leggings and with a cardigan on top. And that takes me on to my next favorite, which is an oldie but a goodie. Where is it? And it is this cardigan that I got years and years and years ago from Matalan. Now, waterfall cardigans were kind of in fashion, but most of them had like a ruffle down the front and they were longer in front and then they kind of like the front dipped lower. This one does the opposite thing. So it is this really lightweight, stretchy knit material. It has these little like flutes on the sleeves like little bell deep like bell sleeves i guess just a, a little ruffle at the sleeve and then along the back of the neck and down the front and all the way around it's got a ruffle so i'll do a cutaway here showing you how it looks on i like that it's long enough at the back that it kind of covers your butt but it's not longer in the front and it has just been so useful and versatile it is warm but it's really lightweight and small to pack it doesn't crease it goes with everything it goes with casual it goes with smart 
like I said, it is warm even though it is quite thin and I just found it the perfect addition over a tunic when we were walking to the restaurant or getting a taxi to the restaurant and then once we were there, the restaurants are usually quite warm and I could just pull it off and be in my tunic and it just worked perfectly and I just realized in April how often I wear that. I wear that to church like over dresses, like it goes well over a maxi dress because of the length at the back and just pretty much over anything. I'm always reaching for that cardigan. It is so handy and I don't think I would be able to cope if I ever lost it or it got damaged or anything because it's it's kind of specific. Like I don't know if I could replace it and it's just so, so useful. So that was been a definite favorite in April and pretty much always. Another definite favorite when we've been traveling is just having an entire backup set of toiletries in my toiletry bag. I've got shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, deodorant, shave gel, razor, toothbrush, toothpaste, everything that I would normally use. I have an extra one in my toiletry bag so that when we travel, I can just grab that bag and go. And when we get back, I can take as long as I need to to unpack. I don't get back from a trip and then want to go take a shower and be like, where's all my bits? It's just been a lifesaver and I highly recommend just duplicating everything you use in the way of toiletries and storing them in your toiletry bag so that it's ready to go when you travel. It's just so convenient. Okay, I'm almost done. I promise you. I've got one series and two YouTube channels to talk about. And the series that we have been watching together as a family is Reggie Yates' Outside Man. If you don't know who Reggie Yates is, he is a British presenter, journalist, journalist I think, and he did a series in various countries covering different topics. So he went to South Africa and he, and he looked at different topics there and he went to Russia and he went to Australia and it has just been so interesting and it's been so worthwhile to watch that together as a family to spark conversations with our kids. Some of the stuff was a little bit gory, he went to South Africa, there were people knifing each other and the medical situation like it was very eye-opening and yes our kids had to look away at times like i was looking away at times but it's hard to find that balance between you want to protect your children and preserve their innocence but you don't want them to live in this little bubble and be unaware of how fortunate they are and what actually goes on in the world so we just felt that this series was valuable to watch together as a family and we can talk about things and I think it really had an impact. Noah came to me a couple of days after watching the South African one and he said he was still thinking about it and he he was like, I can't believe people live like that. And we had a conversation about how fortunate we are and how unfair it is. Like it's not fair that people have to live like that. And it's not fair that we have a comfortable life and that we are so privileged in comparison to so many people. And that's not fair either. And to be grateful for what we have and to, be aware of the suffering that other people may experience and see what we can do to help. So it's just been a really, really good series and I highly recommend it. And then the last two favorites I'll mention are YouTube channels. One is Louise Pentland on Sprinkle of Glitter. I have been watching her for about 10 years now. I've been watching her for ages and ages, but I've just been so particularly enjoying her content lately. And she's one of those YouTubers where no matter what she uploads, I will watch it even if it's not particularly relevant to me. So I've just really been enjoying her videos. If you don't watch her videos, definitely go and check them out. I love how down to earth she is, how real she is. She's funny, she's so funny. She filmed this vlog recently where she was just having one of those days where you kind of plan how you want it to go and then it doesn't go that way. And she was like crying because all she wanted to do was pre-chop her vegetables. She just wanted to be the person who pre-chopped her vegetables that day and she couldn't and she was like crying about it. To be fair, she's like recently had a baby. She's got a two month old baby. So hormones had something to do with it, but your heart goes out to her, but like it was so funny at the same time. Anyway, I just really, really have been enjoying her videos. Like I said, I've been watching her for years, but her content I think is just, it's just my cup of tea at the moment. So I highly recommend her. The other YouTube channel that I've really been enjoying is The Bite Shot. It's by Joni Simon. She is a food photographer and she does videos showing different techniques or editing techniques or tips and tricks to do with food photography. And her work is stunningly beautiful. I like how she presents. 
I like how she styles everything and I just really have been enjoying her videos. So if you are interested in photography or food photography in particular, then definitely go and check out The Bite Shot. As always, I will link everything down below. Wow, I hope this video isn't a million years long. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.